So what's the story behind the pink gloves on the <laughs> these table? Pink, these sit on my desk every day in my office, and I think they're emblematic of maybe the boldest moment, which was the decision to dispute the FDA. So we're about to go interview Cindy Eckert. Cindy pushed female Viagra through the FDA, which was a hard feat. I was up like so late last night just taking notes and like writing out questions. I'm very excited. I think a big problem is like the faces of tech. It's like such a male like dominated industry. Mark Zuckerberg, like Elon Musk. Part of the reason like why women don't want to join, there's not like representation. If somebody were to say, I'd like to introduce you to a pharmaceutical CEO who sold their last business for a billion dollars. And just imagine who that looks like. Doesn't look like me. <laughs> what made you want to go into pharmaceuticals specifically? Yeah, I think when I started, I didn't know that I wanted to be in pharma. I love the industry for what it can do. But the truth is, along the path, like I was in an industry that was mostly male dominated. If I looked up in the organization, nobody looked like me. Um, there wasn't a lot of female leadership. There still isn't today, which is why I started my own. And I called the company Slate, and it was really clean slate. So like, how do I say this? Your, your story kind of mirrors like my thought process a lot okay. in, this, in the sense that like, I love technology and I love yeah. disruptive technology, but like, how do you feel about working within the system and then working outside yeah. of it? And like, how do you balance the two? I like challenging the system. So my best way to affect change is to be a leader in the industry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, there's a version in which you could say, well, I just don't like anything that they're doing, so I'm gonna pack my bags and go elsewhere. Or there's a version in which you say, you know what, I don't like it, and it can be done differently, so watch me. So like, how did you go about doing that in like yeah. your early stages? So, you know, in pharma, most of my career, sold my business, had what seemed like entrepreneur dream come true, huge company buys it, they're gonna march it across the globe, they're gonna make it affordable for women, and then because of what happened in their business, they didn't. They basically didn't shepherd my baby um, the way that I expected it, so I got it back. And then I applied all those things that I wanted to do to fix it, so I cut a drug price in half. Nobody's done that in 25 years. It's part of the problem with the industry. So watch me, I just did it. When you looked up, there were not many people who looked like you, but you yeah. still like pushed forward. Like, how do you then look at this status quo and then say that I'm gonna impose my, the future that I'd like on this um, system yeah. and make your way? Um, it was driven by conviction that women deserved choice. You know, we have brain scan studies that show that for some women, a lack of interest can be biological. And we had study after study after study. And yet what was still happening is that women who had this going on would raise their hand in their doctor's office and they'd be patted on the shoulder and say, just relax, just, just have a glass of wine, just whatever. And that dismissiveness is actually really pervasive. Um, it's pervasive in women's health. Um, it's magnified hugely, I think, when it comes to sex and it just, was not right. I used to tease that if I couldn't get approved for women, I'd go back and study in men and it would be a slam dunk because uh, there were 26 drugs uh, already approved for men. So men have it across a broad spectrum of dysfunctions and we were the first to break through for, for just women's one. most common. Yeah, so I got one on the board. We have a lot more to go. I'm hoping that I broke the door down. But like, how do you get people to take you seriously? Yeah, um, when I was on the path with Addy, people called it the little pink pill. And they would say, oh, the little pink pill. And oh, isn't that cute? And when I realized that there was so much dismissiveness underneath it, I started showing up in blazing hot pink. It's the gender stereotype. Instead of coming back from it, I'm going straight for it uh, so we can talk about it. And so as I was underestimated, showing up in rooms in which I didn't look the part, I was the one woman in the room, I was younger, there, whatever it may have been, I was in blazing hot pink and they were all in navy and, and gray. Um, it became that I sort of enjoyed the underestimation and the surprise when I showed up and killed him with confidence. And that meant that I knew my stuff cold. So what's the story behind the pink gloves on the <laughs> table? Pink, these sit on my desk every day in my office and I think they're emblematic of maybe the boldest moment, which was the decision to dispute the FDA. 
We were this tiny little company. I did all the work. I met all the outcomes. Sat down with the FDA. They rejected me, even though I'd met all the outcomes. And on that day, I can tell you, like, that was the end of the business. And I sat down in an airport, and I think I probably didn't get up for a couple hours. Like, I just was paralyzed. I had no idea what we were going to do. And over that weekend, I went and met with uh, one of the women who had the condition. And in that moment, I thought, mm -mm, this is why I'm doing it. And on Monday, I walked in and I said, we're going to dispute the FDA. And it ultimately paid off, but it was rough <laughs> that day. It was, uh, you know, it was really a hard, uh, a hard journey to get there. If you feel like you don't fit in the system or you don't imagine the part, the way to make your way into it is to surprise people and continue to show up and never let that underestimation shake your confidence in what you're set out to do. Thanks for watching. There's more where that came from. Subscribe for more videos from Road Trip Nation.